Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. I've got a crazy Fender Friday for you guys today. This is a Fender model that was produced in a very transitional time period, so it's, it's not gonna look like most Fenders that you're used to seeing on the store shelves today. But before we dive in too much of the history on this one, let's go ahead and take this thing out of its case. Inside here sleeps what is known as <laughs> the, the, the Fender Performer. It's an acquired taste. You either love this or you don't. It's a weird sharp headstock, kind of like the Arrow guitar that we had just talked about not too long ago, AKA the Swinger. But yeah, it's got this really cool metallic finish, these like slanted humbuckers, some sort of a, a really freaky bulky trem unit. You've got the cool vintage style fender knobs. It's got that vintage smell to it. I mean, these are really strange, bizarre guitars. So let's learn a little bit more about these things. This model was only produced for one year, from 1985 to 1986. And as I was telling you earlier, it was produced between that whole CBS into FMIC that took place on March 5th of 1985. They were essentially trying to do this hip new guitar for rock and metal. I mean, let's be real here. The late 80s was a really strange time for Gibson and Fender. Both of the companies had just been sold into new ownership. Both new guys really didn't exactly know what they should be doing at this point in time, so they were just firing everything out there hoping something would stick Gibson finally struck gold with the classic series Fender finally struck gold with their kind of more reissue styled instruments once they made it back to the USA of producing guitars but some strange things from Fender during this time the HM Stratocaster heavy metal strat as they're known the Katana series which is a really nice one you can check out my Katana bass review but they also made guitars there were the Fender leads which we found within the Trey Tuesday series those are actually pretty nice little guitars guitars. There was the Boxer series. Don't even get me started on the Prodigy. But a few of these names and models might be familiar to you because Fender has been reissuing these quite a bit lately because they're about 30 years old now. So will we see a reissue of the Performer? Maybe. I, I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see. So let's talk Performer. Besides what we've already talked about with the weird funky pickups and our controls, they had a lot going on here. So they had their own patented little tremolo system here called the Fender System 1, essentially their version of a Kaler, but according to Mark Agnesi, even worse. <laughs> These were all made in Japan, so it kind of has a katana-like headstock to it as well. It has a really sharp looking Fender logo, which looks really cool, says made in Japan, almost has like a boomerang shape right there. And it says performer right there. Very streamlined headstock design, super ultra thin skinny neck still has the skunk stripe construction even though you have the rosewood fretboard on top you've got so many different cool metallic finishes on this one i believe this one is considered emerald mist it's one of the harder to find colors and the particular color that i wanted to document you can have a lot of fun with this on green screen so while i tell you about the other colors how about i just show you them so you can find things like gunmetal blue there's a frost the emerald mist as this one is there's a burgundy mist and then there's even a more of a traditional brown sunburst if you like this in guitar format there's also performer bases out there if you're lucky enough to find one so for the most part they were pretty flashy in your face but let me tell you i've owned this guitar for about a year now it's pretty comfortable to play it's like an offset stratocaster essentially because you still have the little fin right here so that feels normal but this upper bout of the Stratocaster has a little bit more of a sharper angle to it. So it doesn't feel that different from a Strat. It just feels a little bit bulkier up here. And then the bottom half of it, honestly, you don't even know it's any different. I mean, it still has that kind of spear-like tip to it on both sides here. And this side does extend a little bit more, kind of Jazz Master-esque. But it works, despite the way that it looks. I could see Fender reissuing these in the future and people falling in love with them. And on top of that, they actually had fancy electronics. It's been a while since we've talked vintage Fenders. It's got the TBX tone control, treble bass expander. So instead of a normal tone knob, you can either boost or cut your treble, essentially. Then we even get a flippity flippity switch right here, which I would assume has something to do with splitting the coils. We'll have to find out. But get this. 24 frets, fantastic. 
And if that wasn't enough for you, that cutaway, it's goofy looking for a reason. It's so you can reach all the frets up here. Now, before we throw this thing on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs, personal story time. Uh, how did I get this guitar? So the story goes on this one is Robert Baker sent me the listing of this at a particular guitar shop that he looks at quite often. And I had saw it previously on Reverb, and I was kind of on the fence because this was a slightly rarer finish. It was advertised as like absolutely excellent condition, which it didn't quite actually end up being. I mean, it's clean, but it's not as clean as I was expecting it. So Robert inadvertently peer pressured me into purchasing this because that was the push I needed to document this weird guitar. But to learn more about the Fender Performer, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs. Inside the Fender Performer, let's take a look at this weird stuff. So the pickguard itself doesn't actually attach to the pickups at all. Those are attached to the body using two different screws. So we'll take a look at those components here in a second, but let's take a look at these humbuckers. So it's basically just a slanted coil blade style humbucker. So when you look on the bottom side here, obviously you got your foam blocks here that have firmed up over the ages, but you can see the coils for the humbuckers. So those are epoxy coated. So that means if something goes wrong with this pickup, the odds of being able to repair it are low. I mean, there's guys that can do it, but let's just say I wouldn't want that job. But there's a nice close up of that. So I could not find any fancy names for these. I'm sure they had something at one point in time, but they're just humbuckers. And the bridge pickup looks exactly the same on this one. And they even have foam padding within here. Now it's very tight for the wires because you have to be careful when screwing that one down that you don't, you know, take it through the wires that are right there. But anyways, inside here, you can see it is all shielded off with the black shielding paint. And on top of that, the back of the pick guard's also shielded. Now, as far as the pots, they don't look like the highest end ones. You actually have a full size one here and then kind of like a smaller pot on that one. And once again, that's because that's the TBX tone control treble bass expander. And then what I'm assuming is the coil split switch and a three way blade style toggle. So our bridge pickup reads about 10.92 K ohms within the circuit, TBX in the middle and 10.77 ish in the neck. Then your middle position here, it's about what you would expect, 5.9-ish. Now this is a coil split switch, so this way it's completely fully on. If you put it towards you, that cuts the readings about in half. So it should give us more of a single coil-esque tone. So 3.28 in our middle position, just the neck 5.86, and the bridge somewhere around 6, 6.2, it seems to fluctuate a little bit. And obviously this will be slightly varied as you play with the TBX. It seems the readings get hotter as you turn it up, but only by a little bit. But yet when you turn it down, it doesn't affect it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure it'll sound different. Let's take a close up of these knobs. I think it's the first time I've had vintage originals in my possession, but I have seen the reissues. So the problem is all this plastic stuff that's been on here is starting to get too old and it cracks. Now these ones, they're all intact, but there was like a rubber gasket around the output jack that is on the side of this one that cracked because it got too brittle. But now what you came to learn about is this weird thing. So it's actually branded Fender. And again, they called it the Fender System 1, kind of like a Fender version of a Kaler. So what you've got going on is it strings through the back just like a normal Stratocaster but you have roller saddles for each individual one here and fine tuners for them, which means up here on the top of the headstock, you have a locking nut. So ideally you're supposed to string this up, lock those down up here and then only tune it using this. But yet it feels very similar to a Stratocaster one and you'll see that on the back but I believe this is actually the original bar. I could be wrong. And it fits very nicely. You don't have to force it in. It's not too incredibly difficult to get out, but it works very well. We'll have to see what my opinion is of this after I've actually played it extensively though. But now you're probably curious, what is the body made out of? Unfortunately, I mean, we can't see anywhere, but I will tell you, if you look in the light just right, you can see one seam line right here and then one more right here. So it is a three piece body and looking these things up online, it appears they could be alder, they could be basswood, they could be birch, they could be maple. So maybe it's just whatever they had. It's either that or nobody really knows. So they just quote different specs and then you get a whole mess of information online with none of it being correct. 
So that's not something I can necessarily tell you, but let's go ahead and appreciate this jade finish. Now it's a poly finish, so when it gets a big ding, it's just going to crack instead of just impress like a nitro would. We got a couple of scratches on this thing. There's kind of a, a deeper one right there in a straight line. A whole slew of them down here by our tailpiece bridge setup and some in this area i mean it was used not overly babied but babied enough that it still looks pretty good yet today for the most part what i was kind of interested the most was you take this off and the color is actually a little bit more green under here which is the exact opposite of what i saw on the back so what i'm guessing is this shielding stuff actually affected the finish and made it kind of go yellowish so that's kind of interesting. So mystery body wood aside, we do have a maple neck with a rosewood fretboard. Once again, you have 22 frets, so it's a full two octaves. You've got a good sized fret wire on these. This is a blade neck. It is very thin. So if you like fatter necks, you don't want one of these things. It was designed to solo and shred. I mean, that's why they called it Fender Performer. Let's see if we can illustrate that with some numbers here. Looks like our nut measures 1.65 inches. And miraculously, only 2.04 by the 12th? Man, I thought that was going to be wider than that. It sure does feel wide, but first fret neck depth, 0.81. And 0.86 by the 12th. Those numbers kind of make it seem like it's bigger than it is. I mean, it's still slightly C-shaped, but very thin. But you do get a little bit more up towards the 12th, but your hand really doesn't hit it. It's not like a deeper C or a U-shaped neck by any means. It's just all shoulder. It's interesting. Here's the neck at the first fret and the 12th fret. Definitely looks pretty small as compared to what we normally see, but definitely rounded and gets flatter up at the 12th. And it appears to me it might actually be a 12 inch radius. And now we move on to the headstock. So that's how the locking nut installs. You have four screws that go into the top. The nut itself just looks like this. You have three locking mechanisms. Pretty much the only difference between this and modern day nuts are, I think modern day ones only use two screws to secure. But then we've got our headstock with that cool Fender Japan logo right there. And the performer, as I was telling you, and there's a bunch of scratches, light nicks and dings. It looks like a small finished chip around that tuner. But kind of a cool, slightly more streamlined headstock as compared to like the Swinger guitar. But definitely very similar. Though I think more people would appreciate this one. Now that I've got it all strung up before we move to the backside. I just have to say, this has one of the lowest actions I've ever had on a guitar. Like it's just on the brink of buzzing in a few locations. But yeah, if you like ultra low action, you might actually like playing one of these. So now let's flop on over to the backside. So now that I'm looking at it again, Here's the covered over part. You see this cover right here? When you take it off, you can see what the finish would have looked like originally. And now I'm seeing it. It has more of a green tint. So as the clear coat yellowed, it almost mellowed out the finish. That, that doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> but there you can see a very distinct color difference. But anyways, here's what that trem system looks like. Pretty much the same as a regular Stratocaster style bridge in the back. That's where the strings get locked into place. The only thing that's really different is it's a single locking system and has fine tuners on it. However, I was really curious, what is under here? Did I not realize this is an active electronic guitar? I thought for sure I was going to see a 9 volt battery under here. No, that's the cavity for the output jack. That's a lot of work just to put one of those style output jacks in here. But I'm glad they did because it's a side mounted jack and it looks great. That has that same shielding paint over top of it right there. But I do want to take a second to acknowledge the fact that these are actually recessed back plates. Normally Stratocasters aren't like that. So that's something that I really like that it's flush mounted and instead of just having small little holes for your strings to poke through, they have a big large cavity. That way you don't have to just leave this off because some guys leave it off because it's such a pain in the butt to, you know, get them where they need to be or they feel it's in their way. This one, you don't have to worry about that. But anyways, back here we have a big swoop of a comfort carve. You've got strap buttons down here and one up here on our deformed Stratocaster body shape here. And then four bolt on neck. Looks like we do have the micro tilt adjustment in there. That has like a, a black plastic layer around it. 
And then we have our neck. This one has a small dent right here on it. A couple of light impressions. Then up here we have our serial number, which appears to be serial number E529275. I was told this was a first year 1985 example. To be honest, I, I don't really know how to read that. I would assume the five maybe means 1985, but the tuners read Fender Japan. Take a look on the edges here. Thankfully, this one does not appear to have any neck pocket cracks, so it's a survivor in that aspect. You got a few nicks and dings along the edges. Now we'll take a look on this side. I will say I'm curious if the nut has actually been replaced because that looks a little bit sloppy to me, like somebody might have chiseled it out at one point in time and replaced it, but maybe that's just par for the course. I haven't seen enough of these to really know. But oh boy, things get fun under blacklight. So the knobs, definitely original. They glow just like our pickup covers do. But what's interesting here is it looks like there might be a little bit of a sticker shadow on the front. Like somebody had a big rectangular sticker on it. Like starting here to around there. Now that's just the shadow. But I think you can kind of see what I'm talking about there. Thankfully, you can't see that in regular lighting situations, but it's things like that I feel a dealer should disclose to somebody. Even if it is invisible and less viewed under blacklight, that might be something that turns someone off about the guitar. They don't want any sticker shadow or anything. Most people, they probably don't care. But yeah, there's that big ding. Thankfully, the finish didn't chip, because normally that is what happens. But the headstock looks nice on this, as does the back of the neck. Cool, let's go ahead and grab our weight. On my scale, this weighs 7 pounds, 3.4 ounces. All right, let's go ahead and plug it in and capture some of its tones. I don't think it'll be much of a playing demo because we got to fiddle with TBX, coil splitting, two different pickups. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the good news is I have it relatively in tune. The bad news is, is the locking nut only works for select strings. I'm not sure what's going on there. It looks like they're all in the right slot. So as far as doing crazy dive bomb staying in tune on this one with its current setup, probably not, but let's go ahead and discover these tones together anyways. I think you're really gonna like this neck pickup. But let's start with our bridge pickup. The TBX is flat. We have it on full humbucking mode. <laughs> Now let's go to that neck pickup. Do the same thing. I really dig that neck pickup. I'm just trying to play a little bit softer today so I don't lose the tuning. But now we'll try that in the in-between position. I haven't done this one yet. I know what you must be thinking. Neck pickup sounds great, but everything else kind of sounds muddy, uninspiring. Like the middle's okay, but now let's mess around with the TBX. So when you roll this off, it almost just acts like a regular tone control on this example. So I've got like an all the way off. 
then more of muted. gives you an idea there what it can do. So that's just half the frequencies. But now let's try it with our neck pickup with the boost. when this thing starts to come to life. So if that's just the neck pickup in between this. Just wait till we have some fun with the bridge. So that used to sound like this. to life. So for the whole dynamic range, this is what you've got for the bridge. From this to this. So if all the way is too much, which it kind of sounds like a bit much sometimes. Roll it down just a tad. Okay, so that's just the TBX. Now we need to <laughs> coil split. All right, I'm curious about that neck pickup. I'm just gonna have the TBX on the middle, basically off. So here we got the neck split. <laughs> Personally, I think I like the, the full-on neck pickup versus this. But maybe with a bit of distortion, that'll sound better. Now, bridge pickup. Try that middle position. I guess that works well for more funky stuff like I was playing earlier. Again, we've got the TBX tone control. Thank you. 
So even though this only looks like a two pickup guitar, you should have potentially three different sounds. It's really a lot more than that. So each pickup has two different sounds with this little coil split switch. And I would say about roughly an additional four good tones. Now, obviously it's a sweep, so there's multiple, multiple, multiple tones that you can choose. But generally there's like a almost all the way there, halfway, and then on your middle. So about five with that. So that's about seven tones for each pickup plus your middle position. So it's kind of about 21 bass tones. So <laughs> no wonder they called it the Fender Performer. You can do a lot of stuff on this. So let's go ahead and try some distortion to see what other sounds I can coax out of this. <laughs> Sounds like it might be a bit microphonic, though. some hum to your amp. <laughs> I like that with the TBX all the way up. It really goes crazy in that single coil mode. But you can definitely dial that back and as back as you want. I prefer it TBX all the way up though. got an interesting tone to it, more so than just rolling down your normal tone knob. Now obviously you can get angry too. Same as your neck pickup. <laughs>
settings. See how well it stays in tune with the halfway functioning locking nut. Stability aside, because it's not really fair since it's not properly set up, it feels nice. It's got a good downward motion to it. You don't have a lot of upward motion though. Maybe you could adjust it to be different, I'm not sure, but it's got a lot of dive bomb potential. Of course, you got enough room to do the meadly meadlies if you're skilled enough for that too. Now that we know all about John Page's weird creation, the Fender Performer, what are my final thoughts on this thing? I've seen these around many a times in guitar hunting episodes and whatnot, and you know, they never really appeal to me outside of the, whoa, this is a quirky guitar factor. But now that I've actually had one, Fender needs to reissue these, at least for an anniversary run, because this neck pickup is fantastic. The bridge, not so impressive in the cleans, but with some distortion, it's also equally as great. So I would actually suggest checking one of these things out. It's not necessarily like some of the other quirky guitar models that I think, you know, if you're a collector or you just like weird guitars, you should own one. I think this could be a serious gigging machine for somebody. It's a little bit untraditional, but it, it's comfortable. It's such ridiculously low action. Sure, I've got a little bit of buzzing up here because of that. But for somebody who does tapping or a bunch of shredding up here at the, you know, 24th fret plus, it's effortless up here. Now, sure, it probably could be just a tad bit more effortless if they could have shaved a little bit right here. But you're not hitting the body or anything I mean, when you're flying up here like this. It's very comfortable for that very slim shredder guy type of neck. Now, at the same time, if you don't like locking trem systems, you might not enjoy this thing. I'm not quite too sure what's going on with my locking nut. I mean, I tightened that one down so much it snapped one of the strings. Now, luckily, I could still demo it like that because it's locked off here. Once you've got those locked down, you technically don't need the strings up here. So my ultimate recommendation, if you like guitars that are shreddy and kind of weird, quirky, and cool from the 80s, definitely try one. I think even at the like $1,500 price point that some of these will sell for, they're worth it. Now, when you start to get into like collectible colors and collectible condition, now paying three grand for one of these, I don't know, I'm still kind of on the fence. There's so many different tones. I might still be able to suggest one even in collector quality because that's how much fun I had just exploring the tones of this. The TBX definitely gives you a lot of different tonal opportunities. And I actually like this one a little bit better than other TBX equipped models that I've had in the past. So if that's the only thing you like from this entire thing, there are plenty of other fenders that have that. But I think that's enough rambling for today. I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. As always, if you're interested in being the next owner of one of these demo guitars, you can check them out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. There's some links in the description.